Chapter 6 Morning came with mixed emotions. Some people were surprisingly positive and optimistic. Perhaps surviving the night and forgetting the real danger they were in brought a new hope. Dane and a few others didn't share those sentiments. They knew this wasn't a camping trip. This was survival. And based upon how some were acting, that hadn't seemed to sink in yet. Some were naive to the task ahead of them. With no camp to disassemble and no breakfast to eat, the small group had very little to do but assemble and talk. I'll skip the pleasantries and assume everyone had a similar night's sleep as I did, Train said. We don't have a lot of time and we need to know where people's minds are at. Let's do a vote, shall we? Wait, what are the options again? Someone asked. Option A is we head back to the city, lay low for the rest of our lives, and try to find some meaningful existence. Option B is we stay here in the woods for the rest of our lives, living off the grid. Option C is we fight back and overthrow the shadow. They all come with varying degrees of risk and reward, so you need to decide for yourself which one makes the most sense for you. Got it. Of the three options we heard last night, raise your hand if you choose option A. A large percentage of the group raised their hands. Raise your hand if you choose option B, Train asked. This time, only two people reluctantly raised their hands. Now raise your hand if you choose option C. Looking around, not a single person raised their hand. With a moment of reflection, Allie raised her hand. Everyone turned to look at her. Then Mr. Camouflage raised his hand. That's two, Train said. Anyone else? You haven't voted, Dane said. My vote? He paused and looked at everyone. Is for option C. There was a moment of silence, and then Dane raised his hand. I wish to change my vote. I'm going with option C. That's four, Train said. Has everyone voted? I haven't voted yet, Lauren said. I was kind of seeing how everyone else voted before I made my decision. What's your decision? Dane asked. Lauren reluctantly raised her hand and said, My vote is for option C. That's five, Train said. Anyone else wish to change their vote? I want to change my vote, Mauricio said. I vote option C. That's six. Professor, Lynn, Cheryl, Train said. You three still going with your original choices? The remaining three hung their heads low, but slowly, one by one, they too recanted their votes. I'll change my vote, Professor said. Yeah, me too. Count me in. Allie, you're the last to vote, Dane said. I'm a fighter, so my vote should be obvious. All right, I think that's everybody, Train said. It's unanimous. The nine of us will take down the shadow. Somehow. We should come up with a name, Dane said. For what? Lynn, the former surgeon, asked. For us, Dane replied with growing enthusiasm. I mean, when history is written, they'll need a name for our little group. The group that overthrew the shadow. The group that overthrew the shadow? Seems a bit wordy if you ask me. No, that's not the name. I was just... How about the Formers? Lynn suggested. The Formers? Dane repeated. You know, because we're all Formers. Former model, former surgeon, former soldier. I don't know. It seems a bit degrading. I don't want to be known as a former anything. How does it make you feel to be called a former scientist? I'm not a former scientist, the professor said. I'm still a scientist. 
Well, whatever you are, we need a better name. The Misfits. The Rejects? The Fringe. Guys, these are all great suggestions, but how about something a little more positive and uplifting? Dane suggested. If we're taking down the shadow, we should make some reference to a shadow, right? What's your idea? Lynn said. I don't know. I haven't thought of it yet. Let me think. What's the opposite of a shadow? Dane pondered. Sunshine, someone blurted out. Light. Light switch. Luminous. Illumination. Illuminati. Flash. Glow. Glowers. Glow sticks. Guys, I feel as though you're not taking this seriously. Glow sticks? Who said that? Do we really want to be referred to as the glow sticks? Whoever suggested that, shame on you. A shadow is produced by an object standing in front of a light source, the professor said. So light is necessary for a shadow. If you truly want to eliminate a shadow, you'd turn all the lights off. Darkness is the enemy of shadows, not light. The dark, Dane said. I like that. I like that name too, Train said. So we're calling ourselves the dark people, Cheryl said. I'll take offense to that. I don't know, Lauren said. What don't you like about it? Dane asked. It just seems a little, I don't know. Something's missing. How about dark circle? Dane suggested. And because we happen to be standing in a circle? Lauren asked. Not just that, it sounds cool. The circles represent wholeness, being one, being complete. It's a perfect shape with no beginning or end. And that somehow represents us? Lauren asked. Oh, I get it. You're the negative one out of the group. Got it. Good to know. Hey, you two, Train said. It hasn't even been 24 hours since we came together as a group. Let's not start fighting now. You're right, I'm sorry. Dane said. I get like this when I haven't eaten. Apology accepted, Lauren replied. And would you like to say anything to me? Dane asked in a somewhat condescending tone. Lauren had a blank look on her face. I can't think of anything. Oh, really? Dane chuckled dismissively. Let me help you out. How about you apologize to me? Why should I apologize to you? You're the one who... Before Lauren had a chance to finish her sentence, she was brought to her knees by a swift kick to the back of her legs. Allie stood over her with a fistful of her hair. She yanked Lauren's head backward. The abrupt and aggressive nature had Lauren frozen in fear and speechless. Listen, bitch, Allie said. We don't have time for these petty games. We're all in this thing together and our survival depends on each other. We all need to get along and work together. Understood? Yes, understood, Lauren muttered, her face wincing in pain. Dane leaned over and whispered to Train. That was aggressive. Allie let go of Lauren's hair, allowing her to stand up. People, get your heads in the game. You're arguing over a name? What's the matter with you? We don't need a name or matching jerseys. We need a strategy. She's right, Mr. Camouflage said. What we're about to do is serious, Allie continued. We're not out here telling ghost stories around the campfire or finding our spirit animals on a nature walk. This is life or death. We don't have time for bickering or coming up with stupid names. Name. Dane corrected. Everyone turned to look at him. What? Evidently, he had a hard time keeping his mouth shut. While you were all saying good morning to each other, I've been with Mr. Camouflage figuring out our next move. Perhaps some of you would like to hear it. Everyone was a little afraid of Allie. She had a short fuse and looked as though she was capable of beating up nearly everyone in the group. 
Do you care to share that plan with us? Dane asked. Mr. Camouflage spoke up. We cannot overthrow anything in the woods. Our first step is to return to the city without being detected. How are we supposed to do that? Someone asked. I spoke with the professor last night, and he was able to geolocate us using the stars. By his estimate, it'll take us roughly four days of hiking to reach the city. Four days? We'll starve before then. No, we'll die of thirst before we starve. I don't think I can make it. Me neither. My feet hurt. The chatter continued until Mr. Camouflage spoke up, raising his voice above the group. Listen, as some of you have pointed out, finding water and food is imperative to our survival. With a little luck, we hope to discover something that will nourish us and quench our thirst along the way. So everyone keep your eyes and ears open. Why our ears? Listen for the sounds of running water. Also, as many of you can see, my condition presents some mobility limitations, Mr. Camouflage said. My robotic legs will only last another two days before the battery runs out. I will also slow down the group which may not be an issue considering some of us may be more comfortable going at a slower pace. This will prolong our journey and force us to stay in the woods a few extra nights. What happens once your robotic legs run out of power? Dane asked. I will need to remain behind with someone while the others go on. I will be completely at yours and nature's mercy. So I please ask you to come back for me once you reach the city and secure transportation. I'll stay with you, Mr. Camouflage. Train volunteered. Thank you, Train. I appreciate that. I'll come back for you both once I reach the city, Dane offered. Thank you. So that's the plan? We start walking? Cheryl asked. I have to be up front with you all. I have a bad knee, and I'm not sure I can hike for four or six days straight. I'm afraid I'll just end up slowing the group down. It's okay. We'll remain together and ensure no one is left behind. Mr. Camouflage assured. Lead the way, Lynn said. Motioning with his finger... Mr. Camouflage pointed out the way. Dane opted to go first, followed by Allie, Lynn, and then Cheryl. Mr. Camouflage was somewhere in the middle, with Lauren and the professor. Train was last. By the way, Dane shouted back to the group. We all agreed on a name, right? We're calling ourselves Dark Circle? <laughs>